Welcome back. This is the second Sligo Metalheads podcast. We're doing this in advance of the Whiplash Festival. It'll be happening August Bank Holiday weekend. Be there or be square, Whiplashers. We had a podcast already. Three legends in that from the Sligo Metal scene. Paddy Clark, Damian McSharry, Kieran Walsh. If you haven't seen that one, check it out. We have another three feet tonight. Three other OGs. Peter Kelly, Owen Lappin and Benny Mern. And if the boys don't mind me saying, Owen and Benny are the driving force behind the Whiplash Festival. They're since the very beginning. They give their time and their energy to make all of this happen for us, so we're very grateful. So let's enjoy tonight, folks, and we're going to kick off with a first question to Peter. So, Peter, you were born in the streets of Garavog Villas. You had two older brothers, two legends in the metal scene, Nigel and Chris. So, Peter, what were your memories getting into metal and what were the bands that stuck with you? Um, yeah, I didn't, uh, I didn't have much of a choice, really. The boys... Um Growing up, you know, there's an age gap between us, but I think five five years with Chris and eight with Nigel. So Nigel was, I would listen to a lot of Ozzy Osbourne, Dio, you know, ACDC, stuff like that, you know. Um, Chris listened to it too, obviously. And so I was I was blessed. Obviously, the boys had to, you know, from the other podcasts with, you know, Nigel's group and had to struggle to get their music. Whereas in, I just had to sit on the landing on the top stairs and listen to it, you know. So I didn't have to beg or, or stay out, you know. Great for albums, but um, Chris listened to a lot of Metallica and Slayer and stuff like that, so I kind of varied from, but my first memories would have been Ozzy and Dio and stuff like that, I really liked it, you know, mm. um, and that definitely came from Nigel, and then the Metallica came from Nigel too, but as I got older, you know, Chris kind of had the t-shirts and Nigel had the t-shirts, so I kind of had to, you know, worm my way in to try and see, could I get my hands on, you know, maybe one of their tapes or something, so Nigel got me a Walkman actually for one Christmas, I think I was about 10 and maybe a mixed tape, like, you know. So and the first song on it was was The Trooper. I remember that at a very young age with the whole, the old headphones, you know, and the, and the cassette thing. Everyone else was running around on their bicycles. I was listening to the, the mixed tape that Nigel made me, you know. So that's that's my oldest memory of um, of that kind of music, yeah. Yeah, 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 we were fortunate. Like, the boys the boys paved the way for you, so you could just, as you said, you could just kind of learn from them and get in on it. You know what choice. So, Benny, in terms of your first memories of heavy metal, you share them with us. Yeah, um, I remember. I, I can remember. I, I always say this, and people might laugh when I say this, but this this is my earliest memory of metal. I remember seeing uh, this band on Top of the Pops, nineteen eighty. We used to watch Top of the Pops in the house. There was a song called "Running Free," Iron Maiden, and I didn't really know it at the time it was metal, but it just it was the bass line at the start. It caught me straight away. I was only five. And I can still, I still remember, it was my earliest memory with it, but I can still remember, to this day, I can still remember watching it and listening to it. At the time, as I said, I didn't know, but I remember it struck a chord with me. And I always loved Maiden, always loved Maiden, from the, from that day on. Now, my dad had, um, like, some, i tell you how <laughs> long ago this is. My, my uncle had a car, actually, um, and it was, you know, those old A-tracks, you know the A-tracks? And he had two Tin Lizzy and a two Tin Lizzy and a Rory Galler A track. A tracks, is A tracks they call them? Yeah. So I um yeah, I used to listen to Tin Lizzy, the boys are back in town, whiskey in the jar, those kind of stuff. Do you know what I mean? And uh yeah, so that's like I was only a kid back then, maybe but um seven, eight when I started listening to Tin Lizzy. Well, you know, I properly listened to Tin Lizzy. And but I remember then um, I was in well was it Wellworths or Woolworths that was in town in the Con Street yeah. mm. was it where Tesco was yeah, yeah. yeah no yeah. no up 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 uh, where um, Boots was on the Con Street I remember I was in there with the mother and she bought me um, Number of the Beast mm. I was because I was looking for this song and uh, I brought it home and didn't I listened to the record I was only a kid like seven or eight whatever it and it wasn't on it and I was like I just kind of honed it off for a while and came back to it a couple of months after after you know I kind of started listening to it again I loved it straight off the bat um, so that's my first memories of it do you know what I mean with, with Maiden and then I had a friend she actually moved to Australia a girl called uh, Sabrina Mann used to live in uh, Sabrina and Georgina two sisters but before uh, Sabrina went to Australia um, we were friends and, and she got me a little patch a wasted years patch and uh, I remember putting on my jacket and sort of do you know what I mean? It was an Iron Maiden jacket, uh, or a Iron Maiden. I had a bomber jacket going to Summerhill the first time in Summerhill, and I remember Karen Walsh, believe it or not, 
he goes over to me, oh, you like Iron Maiden? And he was like, he was sussing me out. And I was like, I like Iron Maiden. So he hit me with a couple of questions and he goes, oh, shit, that's what I'm to read. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But that's me. That's my earliest memories of yeah. Maiden. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Great music, yeah. like Phil oh, Lennon great. and yeah, yeah. Uh, Rory oh, Gallagher, the Irish yeah. legends. And then, yeah. like, it's gas how things changed. Top of the Pops back then, everybody was would wait and see what number one was. Yeah, and exactly. if it, you know, if Met was in, it was yeah. like, wow, yeah. like, there's heavy yeah. rock in, in, yeah. in the popular music, like, you know. So Owen, you moved to Sligo from Tip in 87 and uh, between 87 and 88 and you went to Summerhill. So before you moved to Sligo from Tip, was there a metal scene down in Tip? And what was it like compared to the scene in Sligo? Can you remember back? Yeah, well, I can, I can a little bit, but it, very different. Like in Tip, there was no music shop. There was The scene was very small. There was a few older lads that liked it. You'd see them wearing stuff on their jackets and stuff you wouldn't really know what it was mm. but it was more Bon Jovi kind of was coming out around then getting popular Def Leppard that kind of stuff was starting to pique the interest because it was on the radio it was getting radio play didn't have CDs or anything like that then it was really the radio and maybe a blank tape and you'd record the kind of songs you'd Survivor for example um, I Had a Tiger and those sort of things you'd be recording the songs that were on the the, the radio but in terms of a scene, no, there wasn't like like in Tip. It was it was small. Okay. It was small because it didn't have a music shop to get the supply of stuff. There wasn't. It wasn't there, you know. And then coming to Sligo was like, oh, like I went to um, uh. in a good way. No, <laughs> joking, no, in a good way. Like, like, like um, I think it was Fitzgerald Shopwell on a right, Street, yeah, yeah. and they had the window display. There was T-shirts. There was badges. There was patches. There was flags. There was all the merch of the stuff and it was like oh my this is heaven yeah. <laughs> you know it was just a very it different it, when, when you came Sligo was a lot more advanced because yeah. it it, around the corner the record room had, had, had the LPs and the tapes and there was just a, more of a scene here where you could actually get something into your hands so it was very different very yeah. different yourself and Killian Gordon and Paddy were just chatting about that the last time remember Fitzgerald's uh, Eddie on the mirror and the killer's mirror and then you had Bruce Lee Enter the dragon, the mirror. That was the were class mirrors. Yeah, you know. they, it it had stuff that you didn't see any anywhere else. Yeah. So it was kind of novel, if you like, but it was just in my eyes, it was oh, this is class. Yeah, like yeah. they had the bullet belts, the uh, wristbands, yeah, it, it, just everything. Yeah. They had a, a whole heap. It was of a great shop. Yeah. yeah, and what's in there now, just for people now to to, to younger people yeah, to remember. Photo fast, I think. Photo fast in O'Connell Street. Yeah. There was a shop in there called Fitzgerald's, and it had the yeah. metal. Uh, it's a long time. It's yeah, gone it's a long, long time yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. I'm afraid. My mum actually worked there for a while upstairs. Um, so first gig and memories. We'll start with you, Benny. What was your first metal gig, and what's your stand-up memory from going to your first metal gig? Well, my first gig was actually Queen in uh, yeah. in Slane. That's '86. Um, that was uh, yeah, that was that was my first one. But my first metal gig was Iron Maiden. Um, I think I think pretty much Owen probably your first gig as well. Well, first metal gig. Uh, and yes, uh, I would have said. Was it no? No, I didn't know. I think my first one was Megadeth. Right. Um, so Iron Maiden, yeah, I remember pretty much the whole day of Iron Maiden. It was we got on the train. I mean, half a Sligo. Every metalhead that was in Sligo was on it at that gig. Um, got on the train. I mean, it must have been six carriages full going up, to, going up to Maiden. Um, got up to. Oh, look, we were having a few drinks. I was only like fifteen myself. Me mates, Ozzy, all the Darren Summers. Um, Half a gram more, like was going. Oh, it was, I mean, it was, it was a great day. Like every Darren Mills, everybody, everybody was on the train. We were all having a beer, up to Dublin. I met Paddy he was there, Sasha, Andre, all the all the lads. You know what I mean? It was just a savage day from start to finish. Um, I remember seeing them, and the only thing about that, that whole day that kind of ruined it was that, uh, there was a phase in Dublin, Peter. You remember this? Um, people were spitting at the bands. Oh. Right, and the and yeah, they were on stage, and I, I remember I could still remember I was up on the left hand side, the old point depot, and there was all these fuckers gobbing. Like, and I'm going, lads, what are you doing? Like, yeah, yeah. I remember Bruce Dickens and going, like, if this containers were going to skirt off, like, yeah. and there, there was no, there was, there was absolutely no, no need for it. My memory of it as well is, I remember um, Bruce Dickinson's son was actually born that that day or that night, you know, when he came. So his birthday was the same day. I think it was the twenty third of September. Uh, 1990 I could I stand on that it could be the fourth even anyways but that's the, and Paddy broke his leg at that gig as well Paddy Clark <laughs> and I remember Skinny McMorrow carried him all around carried Dublin, him all from Dublin back he back carried him all around <laughs> Dublin that day in front of him and then the boys got kicked out of Isaac's hostel um, 
I don't know what happened there, but they got kicked out of the hostel and uh, they had to sleep up in the station. Poor Paddy was in the fucking hip. Oh, Do you know what I mean? And yeah. got back to Dublin. I remember he had the cast on for weeks. Like, but Janet's my memory of uh, Maiden and in, in, in uh, the first gig. Great time. What great time. Nineteen ninety. Nineteen ninety. Yeah, it was yeah, my yeah. first metal gig. Hey, I know a better man than Skinny McMahon to be carrying oh, you, you can build. Yeah, look Owen. at him. Man's a thoroughbred. I know, a thoroughbred, yeah. Oh, and you said Megadeth. So well, I'd say the first rock kind of one was here in Sligo going to status quo in the sports, sports complex. complex. yeah. That was in 1990, and then kind of, that was local. So it was easy to get to. You didn't have to be travelling or anything. And then as soon as the 1991 came, there was just like an avalanche. Yeah. Kind of once it started going to one, there was loads, you know. But Megadeth, kind of April of 91, was a pinnacle kind of like that was I really remember that one and then after that it was just the gig started then yeah um at the time it was basically no bus no gig so I was told so uh, you know the parents kind of just said no bus no gig so I kind of said that's it we're organizing a bus so organize the bus to make it happen that was it since and since I survived I got to go to a lot more <laughs> yeah yeah and who organised the buses back then on who but I, I did one for Megadeth and I did one Man. for ACDC and I know that uh, later on I think the following year we did, went to Morbid Angel as well by bus the, after that then maybe going on the train a, a lot more but up to that it was just organising the bus and getting yeah, the gang nice together one. and up ah, brilliant hey, one memory I have from the bus I won't mention any names and uh, the record was broken that day we got I think Benny you organised the bus I can't remember what gig it was Next thing, go to the car or roundabout. Hey, you wouldn't mind pulling over there to go to the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> car or roundabout from here, John. Uh, so, Peter, your first uh, gig and, and, and your, what's your memories from it, your first medal? Yeah, um, I had to be a company to my first gig because I was too young, but, you know, I do have a loving brother, Nigel Kelly, and he brought me to the cult in 1990 in the Point Depot. Oh. Up in the car and drove back in the car. I remember, I remember meeting... Karen Walsh and I don't know if Damien I know there was a few of lads there mm. uh, Nigel's friends meeting them outside I remember meeting Dean Gurry actually in, in there as well Like I was only very young in 1990 sure I was born in 78 so 11 like 11 or 12 yeah. 11 mm. I think yeah so Nigel drove up and back and um, I kind of continued then as own, like own you know I started going to more concerts so my next concert after that Nigel brought me again but he actually brought me to Metallica in 92 to the wherever we made Rome tour in the Point Depot so in reality, my first concert to go to on my own that my dad let me go to on the train with the boys and have that whole experience with them was Pantera in the SFX in 1993. Yeah. Myself, Jason Scan, and stayed in the Clark Sisters' house up there. And um, I was terrified, absolutely terrified. <laughs> I seen him with tattoos on the side of his head and, you know, and lads with a lot of tattoos that was intimidating looking like. And obviously, yeah, uh, things have changed for me since then, you know, a few more tattoos myself. But... Um, mm. Them gigs were amazing. The cult, you know, I wasn't a big fan because I liked heavier music, but it was an amazing atmosphere. Yeah. yeah. Um, Metallica was unreal. You know, everyone that I knew was at Metallica. You know, myself, Darren Mills, Nigel, Declan Boyd, a few of us <coughs> up on the train, you know. And, um, but Pantera then, I can remember Pantera. Like, and obviously that young too as well. Like, I don't think I had a, I might have had a pint maybe at that age in 1993 but you know yeah. that all changed a few years after that too as well <laughs> <laughs> you, you know. oh we hold on yeah um, and just staying with you Peter what was your first t-shirt um, I'm admiring your jacket I'll come to that in a minute but what was your first uh, metal t-shirt and where did you get it Peter yeah um, the first metal t-shirt that was bought for me was Nigel again there was a lot of t-shirts in my house, you know, mm. I mean, and you had to, you were in a lot of trouble. I would have been in a lot of trouble if I touched Chris's or Nigel's stuff, you know, so like if I had asked him to wear them. But the first one Nigel bought me was actually in the record room. And at that time, um, it was in the late 80s and it was the Master of Puppets one. But they had all the original t-shirts back then, like so Master yeah. of Puppets, you know, so I think it was, it, it could have been 88 or 89, it was 10 or 11. And... Um, and then the T-shirt that was given to me, I remember, I actually spoke about it last week at work, was from Mousy Devaney in 1988. He was at Slayer. I have a photograph of me in the house with a white Slayer T-shirt, you know, on the 1988 tours. I, I remember Mousy saying the T-shirt was more expensive than the ticket for Slayer back then, you know. Mm. But um, I went mental after that. Once I started the T-shirts, I heard Karen Walsh last night or whenever the, but the last podcast talking about back prints, you know. Yeah. I won't touch a T-shirt if it doesn't have a back print. Yeah. Absolutely not, no. No, no. Mm. I, it, and it's it's definitely a thing in the metal scene because, mm. you know, it has to have a back print and it has to have, if it doesn't have tour dates, there has to be a cool back print on it. And I, and I know my stuff about my T-shirts. I have too many of them. 
and I'm getting into yeah, trouble for enough, Peter. How many, how many t-shirts roughly would you say I have, Peter? Roughly. At the moment, um, at the moment I would have well over a hundred, but I over the last two years I've I had to declutter, Eamon. Mm. I had to declutter because you know what? I, I and I done it in a good way. I, I I gave some of them away and I sold a lot of them to uh, to other metalheads. Mm that appreciate them too as well because they're, they're lying in, in my wardrobe too as well but I mean it was just it was I'm a hoarder I love I love <laughs> I, I have a lot of stuff from a kid yeah. you know and t-shirts is is very important to me yeah. do you know what I mean I, I really do I look I look after my t-shirts and I um, you know they're they're just um, they're a badge of honour as the boy said last night do you know what I mean it's, it's exactly you know, yeah. and back in the day like I mean when you had a cool t-shirt people knew you had a cool one you know Yeah. and I do thank Nigel Kelly too as well he lives in America so the odd time I get something sent over to me and someone's like yeah you can't get that in town you know you'll find it hard to get it on the internet too but yeah. you know it's I know it's not a competition but yeah when it comes to clothing you know I thank uh, Nigel Nigel got me the Master of Puppets one had the, the album on the front and the names of it on the back I'm sure everyone remembers it Mm. And Mousy gave me the white slayer one that I'd say it'd be worth a fortune if I had it now, but I don't know where that went. I had a white slayer once out to heaven as well. It was taken off the line. <laughs> anyway, no more about that. But I was admiring your your jacket there. I'm sure there's a story behind that, Peter. Would you tell yeah, us about that first? That jacket, um, yeah, I'd lost that jacket twice, and it was given to me <coughs> when I was ten. So I'm 45 now, so that's 35 years ago, and it was given to uh, it was given to me by Mickey Downs, uh, Nigel's friend. From Sligo, and I remember he signed the inside of it. Actually, I think it's 2013, and it says, uh, "My mum made this jacket in 1986." <laughs> signed Mickey Down. So the jacket was made in 1986, and I've seen the photographs of the Metallica 1988. All the boys going up on the train for the, the when they played in the top uh, hat, was yeah, it the top yeah, hat? Yeah. Yeah. And the Mickey has that jacket on him, you know. But um, I lost it in the summer project up in Enniskillen, and it was got back because there was different weeks, and Chris got it back for me on the second week of the project. And then I lost it another time at a bike rally, and it was given back to me six months later. Oh, by found by a lad. So I, I haven't parted with it, and I never will part with it, you know. But to have something that long, obviously, you know, for me, it's like that's my, you know, that's my um, pride and joy out of out of all the metal stuff I have, you know. Yeah. But um, yeah. Oh, it's class. And Mickey, a gentleman. Yeah, another hey, shout Absolutely. out to Mickey, another martial artist. But man, Mickey, <laughs> always a true gent. So that's a, that's a lovely story behind that. Oh, and I'm in another man with a battle jacket on him tonight. Um, Doesn't have the history of that one, though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, like, still in all, we, we spoke the last day to the boys, you know, buying the patches, selecting the patches. So tell us about yours, Owen, because it, it's a nice one, too. Well, it's like that. It's probably the fourth or fifth one, of a good few of them. But started back um, back in Summerhill, Anthony Cullen drew on the back of uh, my original denim jacket, and he, he did the Marble Angel logo on it. And ever since then, I've always had a, a jacket like of some kind, either mm. with a back patch or with uh, drawn on it. And then the patches, you just collect them, you know, anywhere you kind of gigs. Uh, some of the shops, they, they've got better over the years. They kind of went up and down that they were popular and then not so popular. But with the internet now, you can kind of get any patches you kind of want for your yeah. jackets now. So it's, it's a little bit different. Back then, you were getting them at a gig or you were getting them going to Dublin, those shops in Dublin that had them, or then that... Shopwell and Sligo when that was there that had a few yeah. so you kind of collected them over the years and I'd nearly have most that I got I'd still have there wouldn't be too many I'd have lost now over <coughs> years, thankfully oh, man, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Oh, so the jackets are they're an important part of it too ah they are yeah like metal fans are so passionate about it you know what I mean there's Peter the connection to the t-shirts the past, the stories behind it the t-shirts with a connection to a concert or whatever like you know it's not just buying it for the sake of it but it's you were there been there bought that bought the t-shirt done that bought the t-shirt so Benny tell us about the metal uniform back in the day <laughs> come on the metal uniform well there, there, there was all different there was all different ones so there was a few guys went for the black canvas yeah black black canvas dingo jeans skin tight bought them do you remember them you get them in in, in black rocks <laughs> yeah. And then you had to have the high top shoes, obviously high, high top boots. Mm. Um, Nike was a big in the in the early eighties, believe it or not. Until Mister Jordan came along and changed all that. Yeah. So you had we used to go for um, high tech, wasn't it? High tech and Reebok, Reebok. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and and LA Gear. I don't know if uh, 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 that's right. LA Gear. LA Gear were cool as well. Mm. So you had two different LA Gear ones. There was one. Um, there were white runner boot, obviously, but there was like an luminous green and there was an luminous orange. So you wore them. But anyways, the black canvas scenes, your high tops, T-shirt, and the denim jacket. And if you were lucky enough, like Shane Keegan and the boys, they had the big fancy Swiss Roo 
um, leather jackets with all the tassels. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Remember, that's right. Remember, that's remember right. Remember saying yeah. that one? Yeah. 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 Mousy had a brown one. Yeah. Mousy yeah, had a brown one right. as well. Yeah. And then some of the other lads used to wear the that real bright um, Sasha Kern. Sasha Kern used to wear that. Um, you know, the, the light blue um, denim. Yeah. Denim blue uh, jeans and jacket. They always have the metal t-shirt on. The chicks flying everywhere looking at them. Um, Andre was the same. Two boys, they used to wear the light blue. Never, never very rarely you'd see them wearing black, you know. But, um, <laughs> yeah, that was pretty much the thing. Like a leather jacket. Um, and then you had your battle jack over that, of course. Do you know what I mean? Mm. That was the crack back in the day. That yeah. was straightforward enough. Do you know what I mean? Nobody kind of... You know, yeah, that was, I suppose, the uniform, wouldn't it be? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was no, just, that's, yeah, you know, high top shoes, pair of skin tight jeans, your t shirt on, either a denim jacket, leather jacket, or, you know, uh, there was no such thing proper as like hoodies. There was jumpers for a while, you know, like uh, sweatshirts. Yeah, um, they, they, you make it out then. Yeah, yeah. There were very few, like. It was few and far between, but yeah, yeah like you were lucky if you got yeah. a sweatshirt with a, a yeah. band logo. Or, and I remember in, in at, at the beginning of the 90s, there was a phase where, um, where all the death metal bands were wearing uh, tracksuit bottoms with their logos, and they're really yeah, cool. Yeah. Um, it was Morbid Angel ones and Obituary ones, and it was mainly the death metal bands. Yeah, yeah. And um, yeah, Morbid Angel, Death, all these bands that these. Do you remember them, Peter? Like, it was yeah, a trend, yeah. But yeah. Can a I, can I, what shops? Them. Like what shops? You was, couldn't. You couldn't. This is the thing. Yeah. So you couldn't, where you would had, you go? Concert. You got them at the gigs. Exactly. You got them at the gigs. And I remember Skinny actually was we were at Masker, and Skinny got a pair. Of the bottoms, and he also got a pair of shorts, like they were board shorts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? They were really cool at the time. I just didn't have enough money with me to buy them, like. Mm. And I think Paddy had a couple of pairs as well, different ones, like mm. Robert Angel, and oh, I think he had a, a, um, obituary ones as well. Mm. Yeah, but they were really cool. Do you know what I mean? The, the, you wore them with your high tops and your long sleeve t shirt. Cool, especially with the summer, like, yeah. And you didn't have the internet to order yeah, them or you anything, like, so you'd, you'd see somebody wearing them and you'd be saying, where'd you get them? And it's only at the gigs you suddenly yeah. saw them and were able to... And then they started them. popping up on, you know, like, Krang and, and what was there, a Terrorizer on? Oh, Raw, Raw Magazine. Yeah. Terrorizer. Yeah. Um, and as, 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 uh, as Damien said, it was like, um, or, you know, like the... Order them, you thought. Like mail know. order. You mail know, yeah, yeah. There's companies that specialise in mail yeah. order. That kind of mm. began. To, yeah. That kind of started. But you really had to work to get something no, that you wanted. Yeah, and yeah. when oh, you yeah. got it, it was like, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. And you mentioned, uh, and I don't mean to offend anybody here or upset anybody about their, but Sasha Kern and yeah. Peter Kelly had the two best heads of hair that were the envy oh, yeah. <laughs> men <laughs> and, the women, and the women admired it. Oh, it's Sasha with the jet black and Peter with the blonde hair. So yeah. shout out to Sasha as well. Yeah. And uh, so Peter, um, Posters was another thing, you know, in terms of people putting up posters on the wall. Anybody that's into music when they're young to put up the posters on the wall. So uh, your bedroom, I'm sure, was covered in, in posters. W what did you have on your walls and where did you I, get the posters? Um, I still have my posters. I have every one of them to up, and to, up from the first one I ever got, believe it or not. A suitcase full of them in the attic in, in 20 Air Vogue. Yeah. And I only stripped that room about maybe 11, 12 years ago. If it, I actually know, maybe, maybe not even that long ago. Yeah, but maybe 10 years ago. But, um, yeah, there used to be, uh, myself and Warren Ford and a few of the boys used to wait, I think every year, a special edition of either, it was either Metal Hammer or Kerrang! and used to be just posters, Yeah, you know, and uh, we used to go over to the bus stop shop, you know, and if you were handy enough, like, you know, you got, you know, two for the price of one. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I see the shifty eye there, though. Yeah, because, <laughs> handy enough. yeah, like, I mean, uh, you know, that's not saying that anyone was, um, was taking them without paying for them, but, you know, like, there was so much... Uh, <laughs> There was so much at stake, mm. yeah. really was. Like I remember like, opening up one of the first ones I ever got and it was like Ride the Lightning Metallica, you know, and it had all the band members underneath and it was like a live concert in the back. And I remember sticking mm. it to the ceiling and Warren helped me do my room. And, you know, I, yeah. like, I remember Warren in my head because I remember going over with him one of the times, you know, to get all these posters. But we were just fanatics, like Owen Mahan too as well was the same. Like you walked into yeah. Owen's room up in Cranmore and Banks Drive and it was just like, you know, posters everywhere and that. But like mine were... I had them in every room in Garavogue. Like, my mum was, you know, she never had a, had a fit over, like, running that, like, because she's just so used to the boys having it. But, yeah. you know, any room I ever moved to, you know, if it was the small room or the big room and that, it had to be plastered and stuff like that, you know. And the thing was, too, Peter, like, with, with the with the metal hammers and that, you had to be quick. You had to be in straight away. Oh, yeah, they yeah, were gone, yeah. They, there was only a few copies. Yeah. So and you had to be quick to get them. You had to be, had to be quick. Because then when they were gone, they were gone. You couldn't get them again. There was, so like, there was only know. a few places you got it. There was the bus stop, 
Whites and and it was a person hands, too, hands, hands, yeah. hands, yeah. hands So yeah. like they'd have a couple of copies, but you're not you're not talking hundreds. Yeah, you're probably talking in the whole town maybe 40, 50 copies. Yeah, mm. there was whites, Q hands, and the bus stop, uh, and Broderick's. Broderick's, yeah, and that uh, Broderick's in the Con Street. But you need to be quick because, and I mean, there was lads to be in there like Jason Scanner, for instance. Jason, yeah, yeah, yeah. He'd have the data, and he'd be there waiting outside the bus stop. Yeah. Actually, he probably he probably said to the man, look, listen. You keep that for me, and I'd be down. Because yeah. he always, and I, I'd say Jason is probably back catalogs of crying or metal hammer. He still has them, yeah. I'd say so, yeah. Them, yeah. I'd say so. But I still have, I still have the posters. Every every one of them in a suitcase. I mean, there's there's a lot, a yeah. lot of stuff in it. Mm. You know, billboards of stuff like I mean, even Clash of the Titans, the original billboard of Clash of the Titans that was given to me from Toby. Actually, Toby Carty gave it to me. He got it off someone else, but it was put, you know, it's it's pristine, it's perfect, it's even folded right, you know. Mm-hmm. I have actually bubble wrap kind of thing around them so they don't get damp in the attic. Ah, brilliant. So, yeah. like, you know, you never know, maybe, you know. It's cast the way the memories come back to you, like you mentioned, Owen, there, Mettler and Amorn, another Mettler. Oh, yeah, we, uh, were, we were. deadly at the art as well, he used to love drawing yeah, and stuff. And yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, Owen, like you mentioned there earlier about um, coming to Summer, well, more so Sligo and... Um, you know, a tip there wasn't much. Came to Sligo, you could get some uh, merchandise. You could get T-shirts and stuff like that. So, when you're in Summerhill, like, what was it like for you? We heard from the boys in the last podcast, Karen and Damien. They went to Summerhill. Paddy went to the Tech. What was it like for you in Summerhill? What was the metal scene like? Well, those lads were those few years ahead of us. Exactly. So they had created the scene if, as such. Mm. They, we were looking up to them. So I started in second year in Summerhill, and like from second to third year, like that. I got into all the music then because some of the older lads would give you a tape, give you a listen to this, kind of show you bits and pieces. And gigs were starting, they were starting to be going to the gigs. So mm. they were coming back with the T-shirt, with the tour dates, and, you know, you'd be envious of them. And then before you knew it, then you were going to the gigs and getting getting the T-shirts. So, like, there was a big enough scene in Summerhill in that uh, um, throughout the year, like, there was, I, don't, I think it was six or seven classes, and there was metalheads in every class. And we all knew each other. Mm. It was a good kind of group. And then each year going up from that had a group, yeah. you know, n- nearly right up to sixth year. Though. So there was a, yeah. there was, it's like it was buzzing. There was a lot of metalheads then, yeah, yeah. you know. It was a small community, but yet big enough that there was a decent, decent, decent amount of lads. Exactly. That were, that were into it. And Damien McSharry mentioned that the last time, like when he went to the gig, there was only a couple handful, and then the the, the, the you know yeah. the, the Sligo cohort grew over time. Like the first bus we ran, mm. I think there was only twelve maybe on it. Yeah. Whereas then that grew, and before you know it, there was thirty or forty going on the bus. So you were tra- having to get the bigger buses, and you know that there was a good there was a good scene. There was yeah. a good scene. It's like that. Like the morning going to Maiden on the train, nineteen ninety. I was fifteen, so it was just the scene was only really taking off mm. in Ireland. There was there must have been six or seven. Car carriage is full of all like all Sligo metalheads going up to mm. I'm talking from the older yeah like and they were all, all, all together going all up together to all together going like up that, to the main there was like oh yeah. there's a good lad yeah I mean the, the, I mean everybody was anybody was at that do you know what I mean from the older lads that would have been going to say puppets tour do you know what I mean they were going that was the beginning years. that was, that was the, the kind beginning, of beginning like the, and then it was a, it's just non stop since thank God mm. you know so Benny like growing up. You have a great memory. Anytime I chat to you, you always can go back. So when you were in your teens, not just the metal, what was the music scene, scene in Sligo like back when, oh, you, when you were in your teens? Sligo was always a fantastic place, town for music. Some great musicians, as everybody, everybody knows. Um, I remember we, when we were kids, um, we used to go into the, 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 um, the, the, what was it called? The Boys Club. There was a little, I don't know, do you remember going in there, Peter? I remember vaguely. Was there they used to, every now and again on a Saturday, they'd have bands in there. And I remember going in seeing bands like um, the boy, the boy, any the boy, the boy. I remember them. I've yeah, the boy. Yeah, yeah. There was a guy in it. Um, the, the, uh, actually, um, Martin Hart, um, fantastic musician. Martin's an absolute legend. It's like a music. Anybody knows that. And there was a guy. I think his name was Fran Healy. I could be wrong. He's from over. Uh, Fra- Fran, Fran, he was. I think it's Franny Healy. His name was. He was from over Dooley Park. And this guy was a rock. I remember because I I'd see him going over by. Over by my grandmother's, you know, um, and, and thinking about safety because he was a rock star in Sligo before there was ever a rock star, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'd see him going over and he, and he, he, was, a, he was just a cool fella, like. Mm. He'd see him going over the road, white t shirt, black leather jacket, he'd have the blue jeans and the roll up and he'd have the dock shoes or the spongers mm. heading over. And I go, 
Cool as fucking the white bland <laughs> flat top, and you know it's, it's those things. Mm. He, and he was a great front man as well. And that boy, the boy, they were, they were a really good band. I can't remember who uh, or who was. Um, it was a Beacon fella, I think. I could be wrong. It was the drummer Martin Hart played the bass. Mm. I can't remember them all, but I remember I seen them there one time. And then you had the Nervous Animals, great band as well. Uh, I remember we used to go into box, watch uh, box. They used to play Murray's when we were younger. Vince used to let us saying, oh yeah, lads, you can go in. They used to play in on uh, Sunday afternoon. Do you remember that, Peter? No. They used to play, in, we'd go in the two Gallagher brothers. Absolutely. Fun. Like they were playing Lizzie and Rory Gallagher. We were starved of that stuff, like. Yeah, Johnny Park we, and yeah, James. Yeah, we'd, go in, and, talent, we'd yeah. go in and watch them. They were only young, like, at the time. Mm. But they were fucking phenomenal. Yeah. Um, who else then? I, I tell you, I remember we were in the, I have to mention them, because we were in, I remember I was in there one Sunday, and we were only starting to, Get, get our band together and blah 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 and I was in there one Sunday uh, one Saturday and I kind of had become friends with Boyton Robert right and uh, another legend right, oh absolutely like, the next thing um, he had a band and Robert was playing the bass right so I can't even remember who he was in the, who the band was with him but he was playing the punk stuff like, and he had the the, the Mohawk the Mohawk, Mohawk, Mohawk yeah. going on there, right so the next thing he was playing and it was absolute shite there's no use to me saying anything else like. <laughs> and he comes up to me he goes well Benny what do you think of that I looked at him Robert are you serious he goes what do you think I said absolute fucking shame he just bust out laughing he took it as a compliment <laughs> and off he went yeah. <laughs> he's like, he's like, he's like, he's like fucking hell Robert it's yeah. absolute shame like, but we're, mean, we're spoiled up here in the North uh, West oh, like, yeah. the, the musical talent that's up here yeah. like you know one of the top legends in the yeah. town we know is Shamey yeah. Without and there's so many different yeah. people like you know what I mean that, and Peter you'll appreciate it from playing and, and Benny and bands and yeah. own, like we are spoiled for choice like any of the time when you have people come from abroad down into Sligo or around the country and the sea live music scene around here yeah. and you know what I mean it's good to acknowledge that so going back in time again to the hops and shout out to Kevin Flannery 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 number one one number one one one, one. <laughs> jump in the fire yeah. fire fire no um, what were your memories from the hops and the the, the legendary sets um, that Kevin Flannery used to play in? and we spoke about it at the last podcast but what's your memories did you go to the hops I'll open it up to you lads yeah, I, I, I used to love them, to be honest. I got, like, when I got, um, say, at 12, 13, 14, we used to love going. You know, we we go to the discos, all, all, the, all the lads, all the, all the crew. And, and as Paddy touched on the last day, uh, you you liked the cure and you liked all the dance stuff for Razor and all that stuff, but you're too cool for that stuff, you know what I mean? You couldn't say it back then, you know what I mean? You couldn't say, oh, I like that, a Razor yeah. tune, or I like Dick and Blue, and I like uh, the Water Boys or whatever. You mm. couldn't say that stuff, you know what I mean? Mm. So you're sitting there for, sitting on your hands pretty much, as Paddy said, sitting on your hands for like two hours, and then the metal set come on. And once you heard Black Betty, you're on. Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah the heads are flying, everything is, yeah. everything else. You just look forward to that, yeah. those few minutes, yeah. and a couple of songs. And, and to be fair, he did play some of the heavier stuff yeah. too. Like he did play Metallica, he did play heavy stuff, yeah. which yeah. was what you look forward to like it was Chris brought me class. to my first one yeah up in Jory's Hotel yeah Jory's yeah. Jory's yeah. Hotel yeah Andy Spring actually I think a lot of the rest of them he used to play for Sligo Rovers he That's was right, actually yeah. one of the bouncers yeah. up there but mm. uh, I, I got in you know and that was it I was I was a I was official yeah. you know Hooked. and as the boy said like you know you waited around and I think like Thunderstruck was after coming out like and you know, uh, he often played Creeping Death the odd time. Yeah. You know, that had been the heaviest yeah. one he played. You know, yeah. he wouldn't attempt to play a Slayer or something. Oh, like he, that, he used to play Slayer. As bad he said, the place would be wrecked. But yeah, um, yeah definitely Black Betty was one of the first songs he used to play. But my memories of all that was was brilliant because when I did get to get into them, you know, because we were very young and you were trying to get into them, even from like I would have been sneaking around the jail wall trying to get into the Dinos. Yeah. yeah. You know, or anything like that at all. Like, you know, when Kevin Flannery played, but. Um, it was always the hops and it was like, you know, the lights and just, it was the atmosphere. And you knew the crew mm. too as well. You had the Cure Heads in one corner, you had the Metal Heads in another corner. And mm. it was like, you know, you were looking at, I used to be infatuated by the T-shirts. You know, I remember seeing Owen and all the boys, you know, and they were not, not a lot older than me, but a little bit older. And Keith yeah. Catney and all these lads with Peace. Testament T-shirts, you know, and yeah. big, like, orange colours and that. Like, And I'd be like, you know, the back print of Metal Up Your Ass with the, you know, Skulls and Binny with the Iron Maiden or whatever it may be. Mm. So like from a very young age, that was very attractive, you know, like anyway, you're yeah. looking at it kind of going, this is my, this is my, um, click, click. Yeah. Like the hops yeah, give you a chance yeah. to wear your stuff. You exactly. Know, to show off yeah. the t-shirt, yeah. show off the gear. So my mother's hands would be good. burnt, sewn on patches <laughs> to try and change them over yeah. and back just to get to the hop, you know, yeah. regardless. But, um, yeah, brilliant times. And then the pictures, uh, like before social media 
cameras uh, on your phones the Kevin had that, and I'd, look, I'd say he has some back catalog oh, of pictures. Yeah, yeah. We, we, he used to be in the record yeah, room, just yeah. for our younger listeners, in the record room, you go to the disco, you'd go to the hop, pictures would be taken, and then they'd be in the front following window week, the, yeah, uh, the yeah, following right, week. the next day or, the, next or the week, whatever, yeah, yeah and you'd yeah, be going yeah. by looking. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm. He, he, he must have some serious collection, and hopefully someday he, he, he opens it up, because it'd be absolutely fabulous to see them. Yeah. I mean... I know, like, I, I talked to Kevin about it, and he has his reasons in fairness to the fact I can understand. Mm. He, he, he said, and I appreciate, I appreciate it and respect it, but hopefully someday he can find it that he might put up a few. Yeah. And, like, like I mean... Imagine making we, a book out of it. Yeah, oh, man, oh, be some, be it'd, be, it'd be just lovely to see some more friends that have sadly gone. Like, he mm. was talking about Greggy and Justin and a few other lads that have passed on. It'd be mm. great to see them, you know mm. what I mean? And, and like... In our little setting when we were all kids, yeah, yeah, hanging yeah. out, do you know what I mean? Absolutely agree. Yeah, hundred percent. So, speaking of memories and back then, Benny, tell us about the the famous Clarence gig for the Teleton. What's your memories? Oh man, that that do you know what? I I remember going down to that gig. Um, I, I didn't know there was a metal band down there or anything. And to be honest with you, it was probably my first time seeing a metal band live. And I remember getting down there and again. Touching on the OGs again, like Karen and and Damien and Mickey, Owen, like not to all everybody who was anybody, any metal because we were starved, like, and the stage was set up right in front of the Clarence, and the nineteen ninety two was the name of the band, and uh, so it was David Ugin on drums, Mark Ugin on guitar, he had a pink Kramer, That's right, left handed yeah. pink Kramer, yeah. yeah. and like Mark back in the day had long curly hair, he was like Kirk Hammond, like really. Phenomenal yeah, guitar player, yeah, yeah, yeah. phenomenal guitar player, and Tommy Coon the other side. There's no bass there, but the boys were absolutely unbelievable. Like it's still pretty much. I remember this. The set was like I'm evil, I'm evil seek and destroy, killed by death. There was another one as well, Peter. I just I can't. Hippy hippy shake. Yeah, yeah. Right yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I remember yeah. watching it. Yeah. I remember. I can still remember Ronaldo standing beside me, and Ronaldo could play drums like the man's a phenomenal musician. Like, and he he, he was my best friend and cousin. And, he's, and the two of us were mad into metal at the time. He was fucking mental for it. And uh, I remember saying to me, you know, we should get a band together. And I was like, yeah, you know, that's not a bad idea. Because we were so impressed with it. Like. Mm-hmm. So Mark, uh, Mark, to be fair, like Mark, Mark and the boys probably inspired us a wee bit. Do you know what I mean? They did, like, they probably inspired us a wee bit. Mm. And that followed, that, that, I think that, that uh, Christmas, I'm going to say that was in May, that Christmas, the boys were not a new drum kit. He had a kit, it was a piece of shit, but he got a new drum kit at Christmas from Mumbottom. And then Darren Fox, an Australian shout out brother, um, and Ozzy, Marquini, my other best friends, the, the, those three lads are my best friends. We set up this band uh, called X Non, and within four months, the boys just went bum, 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 and they just got unbelievably good in, in the shape and in the space in no time. And we did our first gig like five months after. We we start we start playing. We did a, a, a little gig down in the Cranmore Centre. Cranmore Centre, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. yeah. But that was all leading leading from the that Clarence gig, believe it or believe it or not. Mm. And yeah, we 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 played uh, played played in 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 the in the Cranmore Centre. But we we'll talk about that again later on. Mm. And that's the Clarence gig did did for me. And after that, I was just fucking hooked on music. It's big, a huge turning point. I remember those other bands there now, like the Void Effect. <clears throat> um, I, um, Nigel, I think it was Nigel Sweeney played guitar. Void Effect were like a Cure band, right? Garda Hannon played the drums. These guys were fantastic for their time. Mm. Hegarty, I can't remember the fella's name. Um, they're like a uh, Cure new romantic band. I could be wrong when I say that, but I remember going again. You shouldn't have liked them, but I fucking liked them. <laughs> they were very, very good. Like, mm. and there was another friend, a friend of mine who was in my school in my class actually, Keith Marshall. He the band. I vaguely remember this, like, and Keith was young, and um, yeah, Keith played a couple of songs, and he had a bit of a band going on, or whatever. But I remember the whole day, pretty much, you know, a couple of the bands. But yeah, that, that was that that gig kind of veered me towards music and and that. And that, it's mad to say, like, but when I look back, it did, like, yeah, it's a significant know. moment, yeah. like, you know what I mean? It was a turn yeah. of my view and set you on your path. Yeah. Um, Peter, uh, what's your memory? Is it, it, it was a video. I think remember. You would have I, I remember. The, I remember that gig so well, and uh, in that I had the video of it. Yeah. I had the VHS of it that was given to me in the tech. I'm nearly sure it was Paul Conlon. Uh, 
aka Whitey Conlon that gave me it um, and I don't know was it his dad that had a copy of it but I watched that over and over and over again for years you know I had I had wrote on the side of it uh, if you know if ever lost return to Peter Kelly 20 Garibog you know mm. but when I look back at it there, there was the same crew in it there was me Warren Ford Oman uh Gang, I know Benny and all the boys were there. I remember me. I remember looking in the in the background as the time went on because that wasn't meant to be out late enough, you know, in nineteen ninety two, whatever time to play that. But mm. you know, even though like we were staring at the band, but in the background, in the video, it's crazy because like a little mosh pit starts off, you know. Mm. And I remember uh, Alan Munns taking off his he had the same t shirt as that was probably the original one back then, and, mm. and taking off his t shirt and Mousy Devaney jumping around with his money. I think he had an Antrax t shirt on a Mousy, if I'm correct, and a, and a and a red bandana around his neck. And the boys were in the middle of this little mosh pit, you know. I remember Owen getting up, I think, on someone's shoulders, or Chris Keeney falling off someone's shoulders. <laughs> there was, you know, there was a lot going on in it. Yeah. But uh, I remember um, uh, Mate Off, the singer of the band, pointing down at myself and the boys, like, and we were there, like, like we were only small kids with curly blonde. I had curly blonde hair, and he was like, "We're going to put the pedal to the metal this time, and we got some Metallica too." And he kind of points down, and I'm like, "He's a fucking rock star, you know." Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Me, love, you know, yeah. he's pointing at us lads, you know. Yeah. And Benny and the boys were that little bit older, but. You know, it didn't matter because I had older brothers that was metalers, metalers too, like, and Chris was there and whoever, mm. and Nigel and Karen Walsh and Damien and all them. So you were protected no matter how young you were. Yeah. You know, well, I don't mean Boy protected from back. trouble. Like, I mean, it was like, you know, you knew in that corner you had Benny and you had Skinny and you had all the boys on that side. Yeah. Mm. And then you looked over to the other side and you had, like, Karen and Nigel and that. But mm. I and remember that gig. So, I remember that gig at Mousy and that. But I yeah. remember that gig so well because, obviously... You know, I wouldn't, I, I wasn't going to have a pint, you know, in 1990, um, that gig was, that was People in Need 1990, because Georgie Gorman finished it up. Yeah. Because I remember watching that video over and over again and played it. And I think I lent it out to someone, I'm not sure who, mm. I never got it back. So if I, if anyone can remember who I lent it out to, because I certainly can't, uh, you know, you might clean out the wardrobe, maybe someday it'll appear again, but, yeah, it'd be great to you know, see like it, that, yeah. it was, it was, yeah. yeah, there wasn't too many copies of it made, but if you look, if you, if I, if I remember correctly, looking at that video, there was another two cameras set on either side of that building mm. looking at it. So someone else was taping it too as well. So it was Teleton 1990, People in Need. Yeah, That's when that gig was done. I'm not sure. It was during <coughs> the summer anyway because the weather was beautiful. Mm. And uh, like Benny said too as well, I remember Mark and, and David and, you know, Meatloaf and them singing and that. But uh, I remember him doing the, the, the solo, the beginning of the solo, like the one solo, not the one solo, but the very first solo, um, Hammer-Ons of Amy Evil. And I remember looking, going, "Oh my God, I need to, I need to learn the guitar." And yeah. that's that was like, yeah. like Benny said, that was it hey, for me too, because yeah. you yeah. never really light seen it live, you know, light bulb moment, yeah, yeah, you know. And the boys, the boys looked at, looked the part too as well, you know. The that's the thing, Peter. They, they were rock stars, like they really yeah, did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Had the yeah. Image as well. yeah. Like and, and, Mar- I can, I can still remember Marky black jeans and he does suede boots on. <clears throat> just and you know, and then I realized he just stood beside me. He <laughs> lived like Mark because Mark used to live. You know where Jason Melly and them were living in, in Devon's Drive. Yeah, yeah. That was their house. Yeah. And I'd see Mark like that, and I never realised that's how yeah. close he was. To yeah, us. yeah, yeah. And then they moved up as far as Crows on or wherever. But he's re- I, still to this. Mark is a cool fella, like. Yeah. yeah and yeah, talented yeah. man, very talented man as well, like. Yeah, yeah. You know, like he, he he's one of those guys. Whatever he puts his hand, to, he's just one fucking legend, like. Yeah. Very good. Ah, uh, yeah. You know, very good. Nice, nice fella, like. Yeah, so just shout out to anybody. Uh, 1990, Teleton gig outside the Clarence. If anybody has a tape, we'd be delighted. Get yeah. in touch with Benny or Owen. And if anybody has a copy of Peter's uh, original. It'll, if, say it, it'll say it found, on the side of it. Or if yeah. lost, yeah, yeah, 20 <laughs> Garibald with us. Yeah. Give us a shout because we'd really appreciate it. It's a piece of uh, Sligo memorabilia in terms yeah. of live music in, in the town. History. It's a piece of history, exactly, Owen. So, favourite gig, Peter? Your favourite metal gig? Hit me. Favourite metal gig? Um... I have, a few, I have a few of them. I'm going to put you on the spot and ask one. Yeah, I'm going to say Pantera. I can remember it because I wouldn't have been, you know, like old enough to go mad on a session, you know, because sometimes you can go to a gig and you can overindulge. So yeah. Pantera 1993, I was kind of like, mm-hmm. it was my first gig to go to and I was careful and scared. So you were, you were there going to try and sneak into a pub and stuff like that, you know. Mm. So I remember very well. I remember, um, I remember a lot about it and I remember it just being... A, a small venue looking back at it but just packed and sweaty so, you know like literally if you put your back yeah, against yeah. the wall like I mean you were literally just soaked you know yeah well that's yeah. affects um, the wall you should be soaked yeah, 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 yeah. yeah it was just chaos you know that but um, you know I remember I remember the songs and that like I can't like remember it you know too too, too clear 
but I just remember being so excited. So if like in in metal terms and like being like I had it made. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I had it made. <laughs> I once. have arrived. I have arrived. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was my first gig to go to on alone. Like I mean, I remember begging my dad, like you know, and I bought the ticket of a Latin tongue for eight pound. So that's what it was sold for, you know. So I got to see them for eight. I think it was eight pound fifty or something. Yeah, like that's that. what they were back in the day. Yeah, yeah. and um, yeah, I didn't have the money for a t-shirt earning at the time, but that was fair enough. It was what I actually got the original one eventually. Nice one. You Thanks know. for sharing that with yeah. us. Uh, Owen, favorite gig, metal gig? I'd have to say Megadeth on the Rust and Peace tour in '91. Kind of, it was a classic lineup, and like that, it was nearly the first proper metal gig going on the bus up, the trip, everyone together, and then the gig itself was just blown away. Like, mm. the Almighty were in support, and they were go, good as well. Like, it just, that, that one sticks out that I always, I remember that as being a great gig. Yeah. There's been a lot since, and seen a lot of bands now over the years, but that's that's definite, even though it was at the start of all my gigging, that one was one of the best. Nice one, thanks for sharing that with us, Owen. Benny? Um, I I gotta be a greedy fucker and say it. there's two, there's two together, right? And I I, I just can't I can't I gotta go up here in ninety three. I couldn't go to see Panther in ninety two. Yeah. I had tickets to go and I couldn't go because I had other stuff on. Some was being born, so I couldn't go. Yeah. Um. Uh. And I went to see them in ninety three, but uh, the fourth of March nineteen ninety two, Third World Posse tour, Sepple Shore and the SFX. Sure, SFX. That yeah. and the that and the Panther, those two gigs. Will forever be unbelievable. Will be absolutely th- those two gigs were just absolutely savage. The place was jammed, as Peter said. The the Pantera one was just yeah out on its own like and just the original lineup. Yeah, the like, original the lineups yeah. with Sepulchre were just on the they were on point. They on were point, just, yeah. It was just yeah. And I remember I, I just like one little thing with, with the gig, Andres Kisser. He had a broken arm, upper arm, yeah, and he had a big brace. Do you remember yeah, on yeah? that? He had a big brace yeah. on it. Yeah, and it was like I'd find the photograph somewhere, and it was like a clamp. How true was T-shirt? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And still yeah, playing guitar, hardcore. hardcore. Yeah, yeah, proper hardcore. Yeah, but they were fucking phenomenal at that time. Mm. They were just they were at top of the game back then. You know, so them and Pantera would be the, my two favorites. Nice one. Yeah, Peter, you played in a few bands. What was that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did. What yeah. was it like? What um, was it like playing in the bands? Tell us a bit. Yeah, uh, I played in the band years ago. With um, I started playing the guitar when I was about nine or ten, I'd say. And Nigel actually brought me up to Gal. Nigel, I think, brought me to Galway, or someone collected it in Galway. And um, my first guitar was a Hondo guitar. I remember that. But I remember my first guitar to get a lend off was actually off Benny. And uh, but yeah, the first band was with Declan Boyd and and Joseph Kivlin, and. Uh, Paranoid or Paranoia Paranoid I think was the name of the band you know so mm. we played we didn't play gigs in that like I mean we played in a, in a small little battle of the bands in, in St. Dan's Club it was only about three bands turned up like I mean but it was just a bit of crack and stuff you know but um, that was in 91 or 92 and sorry yeah 91 or 92 but in the middle of 92 um, I met Joe Martin and Declan Sheenan and Keith Lee, but lads from Clooney and uh, we had a band called Typhoid and uh, we wanted to be Metallica, you know. Like if I look back at it, they were they were great days, you know. And uh, we got to play a gig. Our first gig was Kevin Flannery let us play in the hall out in Clooney before the before the disco, you know. And we had like we we were the pretty cool guys. We had like little groupies and all, you know. So um, for no, you made it when you're support actor <laughs> Kevin Flannery. Come on, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> we, uh, we were allowed we were allowed play before the disco, you know. Like so you think of it, little small amps and a big massive building. You probably couldn't hear a thing, but like. We just knew we were the next Metallica, you know. I remember drinking a can of Smittix. <coughs> rotten. Yeah, yeah, absolutely rotten. But I remember drinking that, like, yeah, I mean, and getting, it in jo- getting it in Johnny <laughs> Max, you know. <clears throat> and um, and we even had a manager. Andy Spring became our manager that owned Johnny Max pub in Clooney at the time. And uh, we got to play a night in Johnny Max, and that was amazing if I look back at it. And uh, then we got to play at Mousy Jinx's biker rally at Mullock Moor. And, so we kind of done a few wee things, you know, but we were yeah. pretty good at the time for young fellas. Yeah. yeah. You know, like, I mean, you know, you were trying to get the solos right. I was lead guitar and I was at, I got Ozzy's guitar then eventually, Ozzy Haney's guitar. Um, it was a, a Gibson Explorer and Ozzy used to have stickers on it. Remember that guitar, Benny? Mm. He used to have the stickers on it like um, Jeff Hannon. Betty. But uh, I took them off and I, brought, I was in Utrecht at the time and I, I got it sprayed white and the whole lot. It was just cool, you know, and then, then I bought myself a Marshall amp Marshall 8080 amp and that was it. I, I had it made, you know, when I mm. got the Marshall amp and um, 
I think Owen Mahan actually came up and collected the Marshall Lamp with me. Actually, I bought it off Barry Tiernan up in Jinx's Avenue. But I remember plugging that in and thinking, trying, you know, just playing the riff of Master of Puppets, going like, yeah, yeah, I've got it made. But yeah, they were, it was amazing, you know, just to do that. I've played a few places since, like, I mean, me and Vinny, I've played with Vinny and the boys, you know, a few times in the last, you know, over 20 years, if not more, like, and played in Utreach with them, actually. Yeah. For when I was very young, I just played the bass for them. But uh, that was an experience, too, because I was even too young to get into Utreach, and Vinny, Benny and the boys always had me back, like, you know, that kind of <laughs> way I wasn't, uh, <laughs> I wasn't the wannabe. I just wanted to be the real deal, you know, yeah. that kind of way. But at the same time, like in my own head, then when I got older, like, I mean, sure, I'd be hammer drunk and I'd be thinking, you know what, I am James Edfield. But <laughs> I'd be making shit of someone's guitar on stage, you know, I'd be like, get that lad off the stage. I thought he could play, you know, but I'd be just, but anywho, yeah, um, I still have guitars and I love, I love my music. I love sitting down playing a guitar too. I haven't played it in a while. I'm not going to lie about that now, but, um, mm. you know, it's, it's something that I, that I always had a passion for, you know, I used mm. to skip school to do it. So that was that. That was a sign, you know. But it was a good positive thing to be skipping school to play the guitar and not be, you know, doing anything else. So yeah, they're my experiences with the boys. And a shout out to the lads in Clooney too as well because I have some great memories with them boys, you know. Yeah. And um, some had some great nights and practicing and stuff like that, you know. Mm. So yeah, um, and the gigs with Benny and the boys too as well. Like I mean, my first concert ever to go to Metal Gig was Exonal in Cranmore Centre. So you know, and the back of the punch ball. <laughs> you know, they were the, the they were down in history the back too. of the punch ball yeah on a yeah. Sunday morning you know Paddy yeah. Clark will remember that one and uh, <laughs> you know there's a, a lot of that I remember I remember yeah the boys no. had it so yeah but like like me I'd watch you because I don't play music but I'm mental into my music but you'll always be in awe like I remember you put up a, a clip there only last year or the year before I can't I remember I don't know I just play I played um, for Paddy's Knife because of Covid yeah, and I done uh, played a lot, played uh, Fade the Black, just the the, the yeah. fast part and Fade the Black, and yeah. just for a bit of crack, like because everyone was putting up little videos because no gigs were on for Paddy's night. Mm. That's right. I remember memory coming up on my phone there actually, out yeah. there two nights ago. From that was four years ago actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and it was cla- it was classic. Just a bit but, of crack, like. Yeah. But my point is, anybody that doesn't play a musical instrument, when they see somebody express themselves with the instrument, you know what I mean? It's a gift. It is a gift. Is, yeah. You yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. So Owen, in terms of. Um, memorabilia and metal memorabilia. We, we spoke about that in the last podcast and the way you collect things. Have you much metal memorabilia and have you any particular favourite? or I probably have too much. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'd be a devil. I would be a collector. Like yeah. I have probably bought and sold a lot over the years, but at the moment I still have an awful lot. Like I do have a lot of bits and pieces and I, I'm, not a, I'm a devil for collecting lots, not just tapes, not just records, not just CDs. I want it all. So I, I collect an awful lot of the bits. So yeah. yeah, I do have plenty of bits and pieces. Um, Like I'd have a couple of original picture discs and they'd be the pride and joy. <coughs> um, I have cause of that, the original <coughs> kind of picture discs. So it's, uh, I have a few nice bits. I have a few nice bits. There's lots have come and gone. Lots of the records have come and gone, but there are a few nice bits that are still there. Any any favourite? To be a few favourites, I have uh, Megadeth so far so good so what fully signed. Very happy at that. That's wow. yeah, you can't buy it. <coughs> we know? we didn't have that sign, but I used to pal with Rhea Conway's uh, nephew Ralphie, and he gave us the picture this so far so good so what, and we were like, oh my god, we thought we were a business like you know. Um, but that's uh, yeah, it's amazing. Never, you have a lot of yeah, there'll be a lot of bits uh, yeah like that you know that mm-hmm. have just been collected and some stuff is old now at this stage. Yeah. So Excellent, nice to have. But so, yeah. oh no, that's that's brilliant. But like I, we notice, metalers are are really yeah. passionate about it. So, Benny, there's a great connection with the Drogheda metalheads and the Sligo metalheads. We've seen that the the, the Drogheda yeah, crew yeah. will come down here, and the Sligo crew have gone up there. So, how did that start? And what's what's the story with the connection, um, Benny? There's there's a couple of different things with that. Um, I remember, I remember, oh, it must be tw- it's twenty odd years, probably tw- over twenty years ago now. Um, I met Alan Bell through another friend, and kind of Alan's a cool fella. Do you know what I mean? Alan goes to everything. He, I'd say that man there's not a band in the world, a man a metal band he hasn't seen. Mm. Uh, he's a cool fella. He's good. He's a good, a really good character. You know, himself and Paddy do be at it all the time, <laughs> slagging and joking on Facebook or whatever. He's a cool fella. A true, true Alan. I met another guy, Tom Mullen, and Ken. So they were the original contacts. You know what I mean? So when they started going to gigs, when they was going to the gigs. I'd bump in them, hang out with them, have a few drinks. And then all the rest of the guys are kind of get, you know, getting to know their friends. And we were getting, I was getting to know their friends. 
Uh, like I'd known Flash obviously from his tennis Lizzie days, mm. and then through doing gigs, um, doing through you know like bringing Metallica down for Whiplash or be at the Clarence gigs or that, I got to know Richie and I got to know Johnny Kerr who played drums with them, mm. and Paddy Levins, uh, and Jimmy Brennan. All these guys who were in Metallica, Colin McSherry, all involved with the different bands. Top professional musicians. I mean, they, these guys arrive in, get the day, you know. How are you doing, Benny? Blah, five minutes we chat, blah, blah. Mm. Then there's just click of, the, click of the fingers, work mode. And yeah. after, again, it's a few beers, a bit of crack, and they're gone. But no, um, and then over the years, it, I, we go to the gigs. It's, you know, it's, it, there was a group set up. It was like, what time will you be in Dublin? Now? So all of, us, all of a sudden, there might be 10, 10 of us, 10 of them. It's grown into, it's, it's monstrous. Like. Mm. like, as soon as the Psycho Metalheads go to Dublin, you're meeting, we're, we're meeting nobody else, but we're meeting those guys. Because it's good, good camaraderie, a bit of slagging, a bit of joking. But it's got to the point now where it's, we're getting invited to weddings, yeah. we're getting invited to birthdays, and we go over and they come over here, and it's it's great. Like it, That's what that's what the whole community is about. Like. Yeah. So, I mean, we, I've got some great friends, Darren Kelly, Big Darren, good friend of mine, Tom, Kenneth, um, Alan, of course. They're, they're super guys like Alan Clark is over there. Alan's Ridgey from Sligo Sligo yeah you know they, these, they're all super lads like good crack they know the music you know and, and they're, they're good lads to hang out with like do you know what I mean you have a beer and they like a bit of crack they're on the same level as ourselves yeah. you know what I mean they're into the same music they grow up in the same areas like as ourselves so they don't think they're special or anything like that mm. that's cool guys yeah. do you know what I mean they're super people yeah, well, that's what, they, you know, having a common interest yeah, together, yeah. common passion yeah. together brings the friendship yeah. and, you know, that's it. you know, as you said, it builds yeah. over the years, so it's yeah. great. And Alan was a great man for casual corner back in the day oh, as well. Oh, yeah. he was, yeah. <laughs> Remember casual, casual yeah. yeah. Oh, casual and corner. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, well, five, uh, ten tens on. Remember that? <laughs> <laughs> bobble, bobble. Yeah, yeah, that was back in the day, casual corner. 1942. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Owen, metal went quiet for a time in the mid-90s. Uh did you still go to gigs back then and how did you find out they were on back then? I got a couple of good gigs in then. Um, I kind of travelled at that kind of time. So like Black Sabbath uh, reformed, um, I think it was 99, they did a gig in Florida, America. So I got to go and see them when they reformed oh. uh, with Ozzy. Like, uh, so that was nice. But uh, And in, in Australia I got to see ZZ Top and... I would come back then via London and go see, like I saw Dayside in London, which I was kind of a big fan and had never seen them and had the chance. So like those few years from kind of 98, 99, 2000, I got to see a lot more bands than I thought I would have, considering it, it wasn't a massive scene. There wasn't loads of touring. Because um, Ireland itself even was starved. You might get a band torn on one tour, but they wouldn't necessarily come the next time round. Mm-hmm. You know, so sometimes you could be waiting a few years before a band would be back here to play. So yeah, no, I got a good few in kind of those few years. So I didn't do too bad. I wasn't too starved. It was all right. Man, fair no, play on. Didn't do too bad. Yeah. Well. Uh, Peter, um, what kind of music are you listening to now? And do you still buy albums or do you stream it? You know, like we spoke at the last podcast um, about taping, listening to the radio, pressing down the buttons, triple trash tread, uh, treat, yeah. uh, uh, treats, sorry, yeah, 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 ball, yeah. yeah. Um, so how do you get your music now and what are you listening to now? With I am... I have a few al- I still have a few LPs in the house. Um, I don't have a lot. I don't have a collection like the lads from the last pack podcast. But um, I have all my CDs. I, have, I remember all mm. them because they were a lot easier than tapes. And <coughs> I got rid of a lot of tapes and stuff like that. But um, I personally listen to Spotify. You know what I mean? And I put on like I mean you know whatever I want. But <coughs> I'm a creature of habit. Like I mean I listen to the same stuff. Mm. You know I listen to Metallica. I listen to Slayer. Like I mean I'm not a big fan of all the new metal. I'm not saying I don't like it. I like certain certain metal bands, you know, like anyway. Mm. I can't name them even as in because I can't think of them. But um, Volbeat, you know, Volbeat and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah, like I mean, there's a lot of new bands out there. Like Nigel sends me on a lot of stuff. Like you know, he could give this band a listen, and before I know it, I'm stuck on an album, you know. But um, Metallica would be my favorite band, you know, and still are. And um, I love listening to old school. I love just sticking on, kill them all if I'm in the gym or going for a cycle and just kind of yeah. just losing myself into that childhood memory yeah. of Seek and Destroy or whatever it may be, you know. Um, but Pantera and stuff like that, you know, I would have been all, like when Trash came in, I know I was only young, but I mean, I kind of, I always varied with it. But I loved, I love Dio, I love listening to Ozzy, I love, I love looking at little 
you know, videos and stuff like that. You know, I remember Nigel dro- uh, driving up to Karen Walsh's house when we were when I was a kid, and he borrowed K- uh, Cliff and Mall off him. I don't know if Karen would remember that, but I remember it. And Nigel brought the tape down, like you know, and put it in. And I was like, watch it with them on a Friday night, and I thought I was in heaven, you know, looking at this Cliff and Mall video, Perfect. you know, because there was no videos in Metallica back Perfect. then. It was only yeah. they only had the one video. That's right. But um, when Cliff and Mall came out after Cliff Burton passed away, that was me hooked to as well. So like, I mean. I just go back to it. I lose myself in music, which is great. You know, mm. like anyway, it makes me feel young again. It makes me feel that just kind of, you know, and you're you're part of something too as well. Benny's right. Like, I mean, it's a community. Yeah. You know, I, you know, it's, it's, it's amazing. The friends you meet, like, and all them lads, like, uh, that I, I don't know, like, not saying I don't know them. I do know all the lads from Drada, but like any time I've ever met them and stuff, through gigs and any of that at all, you know, it's always been, you know, how's it going, how's things. So the amount of people I've met through the years, mm. through concerts and through the music scene, mm. do you know what I mean? You know that if you weren't into the music, you probably wouldn't associate, not associate yourself with them. You wouldn't know them as, as people. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It can be a bit daunting if you've seen a fellow walking in with a biker jacket or whatever it may be. But like when you see a metalhead and you are a metalhead, you can go over and say, hey man, where did you get that patch? You could pick one patch out of 50 patches and go, that is unique. You know it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know it by looking at it. I'm like going, I'm not just a collector of t-shirts and that like give me a patch and I even bought myself a sewing machine to make up my own jackets that's how, how you know Yeah, yeah. I actually didn't buy the sewing machine it was given to me that's a lie but um, <laughs> I, I, I love me patches I'm addicted to patches and yeah. I still am to this day when I could have seen Owen in the hallway the first thing was like shaking his hand and looking down at the patches at the same I time know, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Peter yeah. has he got something I don't yeah <laughs> tell that story about you going over the street with the headphones on someone stab you oh you listen to oh, oh yeah 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 yeah. I remember walking <laughs> down uh, yeah I remember walking down O'Connell Street one day you know I don't know maybe I was just having a wee romantic day in my head or whatever like, but I was listening to Rock Set you know but I had a I had a Slayer hoodie on me you know and I'm not sure. I'm not sure who it was that actually passed Tesco, you know, on a Connor Street side. Yeah. And he's like Kelly, ah, hands up like that. Yeah, yeah. Like rock on, brother. Like I was listening to, you know, <laughs> must have been, must have been, you know, <laughs> you know what I mean. So like, you know, yeah, you can't. You, I wasn't going to shout it. He's like, yeah, he's listening to something really heavy now. He's in, you know, he's in that zone. But um, I love all kinds of music. But metal right. is metal is my favorite. I really do. I appreciate a good musician, and I genuinely do love all kinds of music. I could be listening to anything, you know. And uh, at the moment, I have uh, a son that's only, he's, he's a, a week old tomorrow. And for the last two mornings, he's been listening to a little bit of Def Leppard because yeah. it's, it's kind of just to introduce him that little bit of rock first and then he'll, he'll graduate to, you know, that little bit of heavier. But he loves, he, loves his, um, he loves his music and, you know, I did from day one. So, like, I'm still, I'm still that child. You know, when I listen to Metallica or I hear a song, it brings me right back to nearly the first time I heard it or overplaying the two. You know, I wasn't allowed to have records in the house when I was a kid, man. I would have scraped them to bits because you were better off giving me a tape because I would have been back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. That's all you've done back then, you know. The tape got caught with the pencil. Oh, with the pencil, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'd be murdering the house to try and get it back right if it wasn't yours, you know. Yeah. But, um, (laughs) yeah. Yeah, I remember um, when you mentioned Cliff and it brought me back as well. Myself and Declan Boyd would be babysitting in Cranmore, uh, uh, Ian and Liam Monaghan. And uh, putting the cliff them all, yeah, it, was a, it was a classic. It was a classic. Was video. Brilliant, yeah. yeah. It was unreal. Um, Benny, in terms of the metal scene now in Ireland, uh, in terms of bands, what's the general scene like? The gigs, uh, a man with the, the finger on the pulse. The, the scene at the middle is absolutely phenomenal. Yeah. Honestly, God, the amount of bands, um, like we got over 90, 90 bands that played to play yeah. with last year. And I'm not just saying it, it's a fucking nightmare to, to pick. Pick the bands. Yeah, it's getting hard. Like it's, it's, it's not like we have to you know, scrimp and save. There's actually I mean, loads I mean, of bands to pick some from. Of the, some of the bands. Oh, at the moment. Listen, uh, but for, for for like I could go through bands there. Like um, I'm going to try and name a few off the top of my head: Primordial, Crucon, Ten Ton Slug, Crossfire, um, Gamma Bomb. Um, who was the one? There's, there's so many. Of them, like, loads. There's so many of them. Like and then you have you know like DME double metal events. I mean, guy there, H, he, he does all the shows, like, in the academy, and the smaller shows, brings the bands in. He does a phenomenal job. And then you have the guys down in Limerick, um, the Siege of Limerick, Siege, they yeah. do it twice a year. So they're doing their, their shows coming up uh, next weekend, Easter, isn't it? Is it? Yes, Easter, Easter yeah, yeah, Easter weekend, they do they do an all-day festival, and then they do another one then in October, Halloween. Yeah. Mm. And those guys do phenomenal work. They, I mean, there's bands... Like the tour now in Ireland used to be just Dublin and Belfast. Now it's Dublin, Limerick and Belfast. Yeah. So all the big bands coming over 
they're playing, say, the academy, the, like Saint Tracks or who else, Crowbar or any, whoever it may be, stopping off down in Limerick because it's a great scene. Obituary, yeah. There's a great, there's a great scene in Limerick. Mm-hmm. But yeah, the scene, the scene. I mean, we got we got some bands in there. Like it's, it's, some of the bands we like, Asylum Road, and we've who else have we on? Oh well, some, suppose, some of the yeah. some like uh, Crossfire there again this year. Um, like some of the bands that come in. Oh my God, the the, the standards. It's it's, it's, it's hard, hard to pick. Like, it's like it is going on. You, you're you're trying to pick a bit of variety yeah. too, because there's quite a, the metal yeah. scene isn't just one genre. Like yeah. it's, it's it's amazing the different yeah. the skill that's out there and the talent that's out uh, there. So you're trying to showcase. We're trying to be broad the enough right. that there's a bit of everything for everybody that's into the rock or the metal, you know. Mm. Um, but it's, you know it can be hard to just hard to pick them. But we do our best. Yeah, yeah we try to get the, we try and get like you know a bit of trash, a bit of death, you know, a bit of new metal, a bit of groove metal, a bit of bit of everything, yeah. a bit of variety for people. Because not everybody, I mean, seven on probably be into trash and groove and death metal. Yeah, that's our thing. But not everybody be into that. Do you know what I mean? There's people be into newer stuff and progressive stuff and you know, black metal. Do we do we people into all the different that come? Mm. Do you know what I mean to to, to the festival? So. Yeah, look, it's very hard, but the f- the abs- the scene at the minute is absolutely it's phenomenal. Cool, yeah. It's strong, and then you have to, you have the like some of the sites like you've, um, what's the one? Ireland Metalheads Uncensored, and then you have Ireland Metalheads. Um, you know, Facebook the, groups. Facebook there's, groups. There's, yeah, there's, there's loads. There's, of, there's, there's loads of pages. Like, yeah, there's a lot more now to I suppose advertise gigs and stuff yeah. like that. It's yeah. not all just word of mouth now. There's social yeah. media is playing them. Yeah. A bigger part than it was, yeah. you know. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. So, 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 what's the plans of one of Benny? What, th- tell us, Gabe, what the appetite of the folks at home now for twenty twenty four Whiplash? Give us a wee bit more. What's, um, what's the? Oh, we what's can't the, tell you all the lineup. No, 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 no. <laughs> but like in general, what's the plan of attack? What do you hope yeah. you were seeing there, Benny? Kind of versatile mix of bands. Is yeah, that going to be approach we, again? Yeah, we always go. We always go that way, versatile. So we can. We're trying to pull on a couple of different crowds. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, but the whole the whole general the ethos of the, thing, the whole thing is just get as many metal heads together as we can. Yeah. Get the community together. Um, just have a bit of fun. You know yeah. what I mean? Um enjoy yourself. It's a platform for, for, for the bands, you know what I mean? To to showcase their, their music to an audience that they usually wouldn't get a chance to do. Yeah. To to to, to showcase it to. Mm. And look, this to come down to Sligo, they're probably going, What the fuck are we going to Sligo for? Now we've had this for twenty years. They get down and go. Oh shit! This is a proper setup here. Like, yeah, we try to do things as professional as we can under the in the budget we have, and we always treat the bands properly. We have a sound guy, the sound engineer there, Ray, Ray McAndrews, is top notch. Yeah, he's as cool as the breeze. He gives them the best sound he possibly can with the gear he has. Yeah, which is always top notch. Mm. Um, everybody always walks away happy, mm. and that's all we want. Have a good time. We can set a bit of merch, make a few quid. We try and look after them with a few quid. It's not a fortune, but do you know what I mean? They all, every band that Whiplash gets paid, they come in, there's a few quid, lads. What? What? Because usually in Dublin, these places, they have to pay to play. Yeah. Whereas when they come to Sligo, we give them a good platform, they can set a bit of merch, they open their doors to new, the new fans, and it widens their... Scope for you know what I mean for selling merch or whatever blah 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 to get down the country see what it's like to get on the road and we give them a good a good it's a professional setup well as professional as we can do it and that's all that's what we're that's what we're all about pretty much oh it is and uh, like credit to you lads like what you're doing is you're 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 showcasing talent from around yeah, the country exactly. right you're bringing them to a new audience yeah you're bringing uh, you're stimulating uh, the local economy mm. because people are coming down here they're spending exactly. their money enjoying the gig so that has to be acknowledged and appreciated and we'll come to the funding a little bit more in a while but we'll go back again and just tell us about the first whiplash in 2005 long time ago now yeah um, we had it in the Leitrim bar the, the, yeah. the, that time so like um, a lot of the venues we, we've varied the venues over the years actually and a lot of them have come and gone so like it hasn't been just in one yeah. place in Sligo which is kind of nice that it's been in a few people have memories from different places but the, the, the Legion was the first year and I think it was three nights we did a Friday, three Saturday nights, yeah. and Sunday so we did a lot of nights we, I suppose we taught big you know we were at a learning curve we taught big we'll do three nights and mm. over the years then we've changed it just to two nights so like you, you learn too it's a learning curve doing it too and it's something that was new to we were going to gigs in Dublin and then we were saying well why not have that in Sligo but 
Yeah. It it can take a lot to build up to getting big bands. And we didn't do too bad over the years. We we have had some of the some big bands that have played, but certainly at the beginning it was all about kind of getting local bands and yeah. we got some from around the country as well but yeah. that's grown over the years we've done more of that but certainly the the, the early whip it was kind of it was a yeah. kind of mad weekend that weekend because it was oh a free for all with the bands in the sense of we were learning they were learning it wasn't yeah. it hadn't been tried and tested so it was kind of new for everybody as well so it was, no there were, people have good memories we, we, we learned we learned a very, uh, we learned a huge amount the first year I yeah. did any years. Yeah, we did. No, we no, because it was I, learning. I know, it was all yeah. learning. Dealing with bands, dealing with, uh, dealing with um, pubs, dealing with yeah. managers. De- you know, it was a different. People see it as just a gig. That's you know, it can be hard because we're making it more than just that. Yeah. I know, I know. You know, I know. It, it, yeah. <clears throat> when people just rock up on the door and pay yeah, the money, and on the they way just and think the band it. appears yeah, out of nowhere. Yeah, yeah. Like it, it yeah. just doesn't. It, so like, there's a bit. So it was a learning curve, you know, dealing with the different. I I can remember the first one, and we were we were a bit apprehensive. Well, I was thinking, no, you know, we like we had a number as I had seventy first night, Friday night. This next night we were looking at one hundred and fifty, and then the su- the Sunday night we were looking at maybe one hundred and eighty, and that, that was us happy. Mm. And I can remember if you remember the Friday night, we two hundred. Mm. This is great. Yeah. Where is round town now? We had the Iron Maiden band the Saturday yeah. night. Yeah. It was three hundred. And, and then the, and then the Saturday night was four hundred and fifty people up in the up in the Leitrim Bar. Yeah. And it was honest to God, it was one of the highlights. I know, yeah. I mean, there's a video of you and Boynton. I know, yeah. Oh, there's, oh, there's, yeah. Like, I mean there's some fantastic That jacket but, is in it too. Yeah, well, Richie like, Sheen yeah. <laughs> Richie Sheen's in the middle of the crowd. I think mm. you were there beside him. Are you um, in the side of Yeah, yeah, myself and me separate yeah. were living on yeah. the mallet at the time. Yeah. So I just come out the door and walk I mean, down into the league. And I can, I can remember the boys coming down, you know, like, what, what the fuck is going on here? Like, what's the crack here? Yeah. Drive down the lane here, lads. Ah, where are we going? Yeah. And they'll tell you to this day, Richie and, and Flash will tell you it's probably one of the best gigs they ever did. Yeah. Oh, but it was a phenomenal light, like, do you know what I mean? It's unreal. Yeah, it really was. Mm. Like, we, myself and all, we were, myself and all the rest of the crew, like, that was there at the time. We were fucking absolutely buzzing yeah, afterwards. Yeah. It was like, a great buzz. Like, it was, yeah. you know, it was a good, great success yeah. and a great buzz. So yeah. we knew, like, oh, we're onto something. Right. Yeah. yeah. When it all comes yeah. together, you put the effort in, yeah. you, you give, bring it all together, and that was just one yeah. of those lightning in a bottle moments. Yeah. So a favourite of all of the Whiplash festivals, what's your favourite memory, uh, Peter? What For me? Your, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I think the fe- I, I loved all of them. I was with like with the lads from when I say with the lads like I was at all of them from day one you know, uh, the Leitrim one was definitely a class one. I'm raging that I ever I lost the t-shirt. I actually had that t-shirt for years and it's one of the ones I have all the other Whiplash t-shirts. But mine would have been when Onslaught came over. Yeah. In 2006, I'm nearly sure it was 2000, 2007. Was it? Sorry. Yeah. Won't spit here. So. Uh, 2007. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, that was that was crazy because I just remember it being packed. You know, just, I mean, the atmosphere, like it was up in the har- at the Art Bar, um, which was the old nightclub in town, you know, and, um, you know, the, the floors were shaking with the, with the vibrations of the music. Like, it was just <laughs> unbelievable, you know. Um, mm. I'm not sure, was it the year before that the, uh, the uh, Flash and the Boys played at the Pantera Tribute? Was yeah. that the year before in 2006? Yeah. yeah. You know, and like, I mean, the, just the atmosphere, the whole lot of them. So I enjoyed all of them, but... I remember, like, I remember Onslaught albums being in the house years ago, The Force and stuff like that, and Nigel having them, you know. But, like, then they're, you're, they're there in Sligo. The boys are standing talking to you, like, you know, like, how's it going? I was saying, you know, and they signed the inside of this jacket. Yeah, they were well. mixing with people, you know, you, you know, get put the autographs. We had to put them on the, the fucking bus, remember, because they were going to miss their, their uh, boat home. Yeah. And they actually put them on the bus, go oh, okay, up to the hotel. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But um, great, great crack, you know what I mean? But... Uh, the first one though, the, the first one that sticks out for me though, because we had an after party, you know, even though I wasn't yeah. part of the crew, like the after party for me was uh, <laughs> after that weekend of Friday, Saturday, Sunday, like, I mean, you know, the last thing I needed was an after party, but I eventually, I got there. <laughs> and, uh, it was just it, like, I mean, you could see with the boys, they were on such a high, you know, from 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 what they'd done, like, I mean, and, and give credit where credit is due, yeah. like, I mean, that's not an easy task. You know, I wasn't, I was there as a, as a spectator. You know, I had nothing to do with, with the whiplash. But, I mean, through the years, I've always had a connection with the lads anyway. So regardless of, of you know, like, would it be doing something or whatever, like, I think it was, you know, take whiplash out of it. And, like, all the other bands that the boys would have got into town, like, or the big four, like, and, you know, just all the atmosphere of all these things. Like, I mean, but whiplash mm. especially. Like, I mean, I gave, Benny gave me flyers to uh, give out up at a bike rally, up at the Emerald Rally. Yeah. 
And uh, I gave out the, the, the flyers for Whiplash. I'm not sure what year it was, 2006, 2007. And uh, I passed the camper van and it was, it was a tattoo, isn't there, you know? And I'm like, giving them out. And I was like, just looked at it. I'm like, can you tattoo that on my neck, you know? <laughs> I'm not sure what side it is. Is it that side there, Whiplash? Yeah, I can see it. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, I, had, I got Whiplash tattooed on the side of my neck from that logo of, of Benny giving me a flyer, you know what I mean? But uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> walk up with it on the neck. <laughs> but uh, yeah, definitely, you're definitely a true fan. But um, no, it's amazing what the boys are doing. And anyone that hasn't been at something like that should come. Even if you're not into metal, like, I mean, you know, you don't, it's not, don't get overwhelmed with it because the music itself and to see the new bands that are coming up, like, I mean, I was amazed last year and any other of the years, you know what I mean? Because there are bands that I don't know too as well. Like the tribute bands are brilliant and they're excellent at what they do. Mm. But when you see some of these new up and coming bands, like I remember seeing Gamma Bomb yeah. and then all of a sudden, like yeah. you hear about yeah. them playing over in France and you hear about them playing in yeah. Germany at these festivals and stuff like that. You're like, I remember them boys playing in 2005. So when these other bands are starting to make a big... As yeah. Benny said, it's a launch pad for them to turn around and say, you know what, give, give themselves a chance. Yeah. And, and you know, it's not about earning the respect. They already have it. Yeah. They, just need, they just need to just turn up and, and come and, and just, you know, and for people that, want, that would come to Whiplash, you know, just come to it because it's an amazing weekend in Sligo, you know, that wasn't there for, for us, any of us in the past. Thanks know. to these two men. So speaking of which. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, Favourite memory of all of the <coughs> Whiplash? Jeez, every year is kind of, yeah. I wouldn't have won because like, well, I suppose the, the pinnacle was having Onslaught over. Like that oh, was yeah, one right. that was kind of different than all the others because they were coming from abroad. And we had to deal with management. It, yeah. it was a whole, it was a different experience. So that that's one that sticks out. Like, and I, I'm just so delighted we got to do it. And um, like that venue's gone and it, 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 a lot of things have changed, but. That, that's Onslaught when they played Sligo Whiplash. They, 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 they even had it on their tour T-shirts, the oh, date, wow. and that was like, oh, yeah, yeah. like talking about the T-shirts and the tour dates, like they have a tour with Sligo on oh, the back. Yeah. It's crazy. It is yeah. an achievement. And, and like that's, that's an achievement. For, 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 for me, that's an achievement. Yeah. I remember when we seven you know. old, we, we got into the venue that day and they were setting up to us, like six of them there. The band was there and the, the, the sound engineer and then the, the guy looking after the merch. And he put the t-shirts up, and we were like, you "Look at the t-shirt." Next thing, it's fucking there. There, there. Next thing, <laughs> high five, wrong. You know, it's there. Yeah. Like, the yeah. like, yeah. like that we was, were delighted. It was. Yeah. It, it, I, I know it's a stupid thing. Yeah. It's probably something stupid for me and him. You know, our first proper. You know, yeah. for a proper like bring a big band over on somewhere a big band. These guys played all all over the world. Like, like the pride has seen that on the back yeah. of the t-shirt. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sligo, but Sligo, Sligo, all the hard back. work. Like, yeah. You know, yeah, but it, uh, listen, it's not a stupid yeah. thing. You heard how much it meant, means to Peter. You heard Peter talking yeah. passionately there yeah. about what the Whiplash Festival means yeah. to people that come yeah. to it and go and make lifelong memories yeah. uh, in the process. So, uh, Benny, tell us, what's the thinking behind using tribute bands at Whiplash? Again, back to it, uh, Eamon. Um, it's a platform. Look, uh, it's like this. Unfortunately, if I put on the cream of the crop, I could bring down, if I could bring Primordial, say, I know this is no disrespect to my primordial. I absolutely love those guys. Mm. Um, to be, I'd be lucky if I got 150 people in, in the venue. Whereas inside, because I want some locals to come in. Now, don't get me wrong, primordial view, try and fan, fan best. I'm going to use them as an example. But like to use the tribute band, I can get extra people in from town. Do you know what I mean? To come in and give the, the bands underneath them, the Irish bands underneath them, a platform again to, 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 to play for people that would, would never see them and they go fuck me that, that band is pretty good like do you know mm. what I mean might buy a t-shirt might buy a bit might buy a t-shirt I might buy uh, a CD you've got CD badges there they? yeah 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 it's only a platform for them mm. do you know what I mean so they can reinvest their money maybe into another album or studio time or whatever it may be that's all it is like that's the thinking behind it and it's great to see the it's great to see the tribute bands as well. Like The tribute band brings familiarity to yeah, people. So if you were on the fence about do or don't I go, when you see the tribute band, yeah. you'll either go, yeah, I want to go and see them yeah. or not. And if you do want to go and see them, the chances are you'll see some of the bands before them as well. Yeah. Whereas if, if you don't recognise anything, you'll just go, I don't I don't know any of this. I won't, yeah. you know. And in Dublin and uh, Cork, Limerick, those bands, the Irish bands are supporting bigger bands a lot more. So people are a lot more familiar. Yeah. Whereas down here... They need something that they're familiar with to kind of gauge, oh, yeah. And that's why we kind of get a tribute band to get somebody that's on the fence in. The diehards will always go. Yeah. But unfortunately, to make the 
the books balance, we need everybody. Yeah. So we need the people, the diehards, and we also need the people on the fence. We need everybody to come in because by supporting it, it means it can happen again. Because if you don't get the support, yeah, it just won't happen. You know, financially it has to make sense as well, yeah. and that's what the tribute bands help. There's no two ways. People are familiar with them; they want to hear their music, and then they get to hear all the. It's a bonus on top of that to get to hear a lot more bands as well by yeah. getting out and supporting. And it's only once a year. It's not like we have them all the time. That's you know, it's only a small window to to, to kind of get people out. Yeah, but, and the model makes yeah. sense. Like, and we we're, we're speaking there about you know balancing yeah. the books and. You do this as a passion. You don't do it as a money-making enterprise. Oh, this no. is just a pure passion project to bring metal to the doors of the people on people's front doorstep in Sligo and for people that are willing to travel. So can I ask you, Owen and Benny, how do you fund Sligo Whiplash? And in addition, if you were given additional funding from somewhere, you think you could grow it? So how, how is it funded? There's a, there's a variety. We we usually sell a bit of merchandise, T-shirts, yeah. patches. Like over the years, we've done different bits. Like you could get um, mugs and different things. We, we A few different things we've tried. So you get a little bit from that. You get a bit of sponsorship. We, we've had some very good sponsorship yeah. where they kind of support us. Um, and we continue. If anyone wants sponsorship, get in touch. Because we, yeah. we always look at getting sponsorship is very it's great because it, it it helps us survive and um, the ticket sales on the door of course the ticket sales in advance we do weekend tickets now this year I think we'll do a nightly ticket as well as a weekend ticket because a lot of people seem to go one night or the other and we were offering advance weekend tickets and then just pay on the door whereas this year I think we'll, we'll also offer that people can plan their trip yeah. better because people like to be able to plan so if they've got their ticket they know which night they're going so we'll probably do that a little bit different than maybe other years um, and then the, the, kind of the sponsorship is is yeah. the biggest thing that helps get us over the line. In other yeah. words, pay because like Benny said, we pay the bands. Like uh, sound has to be paid, the advertising all has to be paid, website has to be paid. You know, there's an awful lot of things that you yeah. know normal expenses a business has that we've got to try and make sure we cover printing posters all that yeah, stuff yeah. flyers yeah. everything yeah. Every, every you know just to get it all work yeah. but that's how that's how it's funded sponsorship yeah. okay. and the ticket sales would be the yeah. two biggie now t-shirt sales to be fair some people are very good and buy a t-shirt that they mightn't be coming like they live abroad and are very good at buying t-shirts to support us as well because it all helps yeah. honestly it all it's amazing it, it all does help. it all adds up go on I sorry just say, um, there, um, I want to I want to I want to say this because um um it, it, like it, uh, Becky Boynton, which is Robert's daughter, and Robert was a great friend of ours. Um, his, and they have they in in his memory, they they sponsor us every year as girls. They sponsor us every year. Um, so they they in, in his memory, instead of you know like um, they don't have they used to have a mask for him and stuff like that. Yeah. And but instead of having a mask now, they just they just give us the sponsorship to keep you know, and and it's great. It's a lovely way to do it because he would have been he would have been absolutely, his, yeah. absolutely. You know what I mean? Element. Up there every every yeah. August weekend, do you know what I mean? Mm. But so yeah, it's it's great the way to do it. Like mm. she, uh, Becky came to me there. She goes on oh, instead of um, she said instead of you know uh, we're, we're thinking of oh, best way to to remember him. But it's, it's a great way because he's always remembered for us. We we never forget him. You know what I mean? Yeah. But yeah, like it, it's a great way, you know. And look, as someone said, if anybody else wants to get in contact and give us a bit of sponsorship, we'd be delighted. You know what I mean? Uh, um, your logo goes on all the posters and. We we try and you know we try and advertise the the sponsors as much as we can. Yeah, like we're doing posts and yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. They, they, we try and give them get them to mention a multimedia. Like and some yeah, social media. media. That, you know, social media. So yeah. we're asking folks, anybody out there, any enterprise, any business, please sponsor these boys, sponsor the Sligo Whiplash Festival because. It brings great energy, experiences, positivity to Sligo and the people that attend it. So anybody that's interested, contact Owen and Benny and they will be delighted to receive anything. And as, as Owen said, it all adds up. doesn't matter if it's anything as small, somebody that they couldn't make the gig and just wants to throw a few pounds towards the door on a night, that all helps as well. And then bigger things like uh, any local businesses or that want to support the boys would be delighted. So this year we're running it from... Uh, 7 to 11.30 how yeah. do you feel about that Laz? do you think that's a better shift in terms of rather than too late at night bringing it back a wee bit how do you feel about that good well last year people I seen like it wasn't fair a lot of the, the, the main bands people were going home half 12 yeah. 1 o'clock just when they were coming on and uh, we just felt they showed myself and Owen 
and we might be better off moving in a wee bit a wee bit earlier. So people, are, you can go out a wee bit earlier, but they'll also get home a wee bit earlier. Um, so yeah, we we reckon it'll work a lot better. Like if you go to a gig in Dublin, say the Academy, or that you're going in there half past seven and you're out the door by eleven o'clock yeah. either anyway. Yeah. So us us folks are well used to it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. That's the norm. Yeah. And if you want to go for another beer afterwards, so be it. There's plenty of pubs open. Do you know? Yeah. And. Peter's a daddy again now, so yeah. he's all asleep he can get, so he, he's home by 12 o'clock at night, yeah. Cinderella, he'd be delighted with that, are you happy with that Peter? Yeah, I'm happy with that, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah thank God, God has given me the energy for it, but um, I think it's a great idea, Yeah. because the lads are right, you know what I mean, and I think it's fair to the bands too as well, because I see it, I see it as a fan, you know, not from the boys' perspective, but it's nearly the same, mm. because if I'm at the gigs and stuff like that, there's times, you know, that you're kind of running a wee bit late and stuff, and um you know, you want to see the main band and stuff like that. You know, like anyway. So, yeah. like, it's not yeah. because people are leaving. Like, it can be, fair, it can be vary for a few reasons. You know, yeah. but if you think of the bands themselves, you yeah. know, the first band on, second band on, or third band on. Yeah. You know, like, wouldn't it be nice for the whole crowd to be there for the whole lot of it? Yeah. And there will be if it's mm-hmm. half eleven or something like that. Because, yeah. as the boy said, like, I mean, you can go anywhere you want after that too. As well, you've got your night of metal. Yeah. You know, there's plenty of other places you could go and just have the crack, like, and that. You know. Yeah. Um, but the Gareth Vogue is a great venue too as well. Like I mean, I've seen plenty of gigs back in the day, but in, in you know Sinner Boy and stuff. Well, you've been at them yourself, yeah. And um, you know, the big generator and all these bands that's played in the Gareth Vogue. Yeah. So I think it's, I think it'll be a different venue, yeah. but I think it'll be amazing because the sound and everything that's yeah. there and that you know, like that's a big, that's a big jump from the likes of the Leitrim Bar. And that's no disrespect to the Leitrim Bar or, no. or, or the Ark Bar or any of these places because, as the boy said, it was never stuck in one place for them. And as a fan of Whiplash. I think it was done the right way because, you know, you're it's a different you're a different place. Like, I mean, it wasn't only that, though, either. Like, you know, back in the day, too, as well. Like, I mean, you had, you know, you had a day thing going on in the pub or the boys playing in Hennigan's or whatever was going on. So, like, it's people celebrate it for a weekend. Do you know what I mean? It's not just that. It's not a night out. It's a it's a whole group of people getting together yeah, yeah, yeah. for two days in the mm-hmm. summer for a bank holiday weekend that you can sit there and, like, and come to Saturday, you can drift through the town and they can get lunch and they can have a breakfast and they can meet up with lads they haven't seen for a while and then head off to a gig at 7 o'clock. It makes sense, like, you know, so... Oh, perfect. Well said, Peter. That's a good advertisement now for the Whiplash Festival in the Garrow Vogue, August bank holiday weekend. And we've heard some great stories tonight, lads. We, you know, we, just all the shout-outs to the names... Uh, Lord of Mercy on Greggy McMorrow Justin Kavanagh yeah. and Robert Boyd, Boyd yeah. you know and I could see it meant a lot to you Benny there when you were talking about the lads you know and that's what keeps it alive I think that's a great thing about the, the podcast yeah. and well done lads you know it's it's keeping the, the memories and the stories alive from years ago and things never die when they live on through these memories and this is a kind of reflection it's a point in time with this podcast uh, it was an honour uh, Benny asked me to do it so it's been an honour to interview the lads and talk to them about their passion and their love of metal <coughs> music. So you heard it here, Whiplashers. August Bank Holiday Weekend. Be there. Uh, it's going to be a great weekend. As Peter had said, it's running a bit earlier. So meet up with your friends. Make the weekend out of it. And I promise you'll have a great time. If you haven't listened to the other podcast with Paddy, Damien and Kieran, please do. And if you want a bit more, you never know. We'll see what happens in the future.